There are not many wide receivers to get off the waiver wire. Usually it's just the same old wide receivers we look at every week, but there's one wide receiver who's rostered in 50% of leagues that we're looking at right now who should have been picked up a while ago because we've been talking about him constantly over these last couple weeks when he's come back from injury in the waiver wire videos, and that's Tank Dell. But we have another player merging out the weeds, scoring some fantasy points, getting some opportunities on the same team as him, the Houston Texans, and that's Noah Brown. Very interesting profiles here, very interesting wide receivers, and we're going to cover whether or not you need them for fantasy football. But what you need to do right now is click that subscribe button. Tap it with your finger on your phone. Click it with your mouse on the computer, whatever you need to do to get the job done, because we go deep on the waiver wire every single day. We help you set your lineups, we help you win your trades, and everything else. But let's take a look at these players real quick, so you get an idea of what you're dealing with. But Tank Dell has been hot off and on throughout the season. He had that concussion. It slowed him down. He also had a couple slow games too. But the nature of this offense, I'm sure you've noticed that one of these wide receivers in a plus matchup goes off, maybe two, and the other one gives you okay results, and they take their turns. And the reason for that, C.J. Stroud doesn't care. He slings rockets. He slings it downfield with accuracy. If you're there, he's going to throw it to you. He does not lock on the one guy, and that's good for a young wide receiver like Tank Dell here. Started the season off pretty hot. Week 2, over 20 fantasy points. Week 3, over 20 fantasy points. Then we had two slow games, and then we had the concussion, and then we had another slow game as we were ramping up, and then we went off last week in production here. 114 yards. Also, two touchdowns, Tank Dell going off in PPR fantasy production, which was a great thing. Now everybody's trying to get him off waivers. When he was coming back from concussion, that's when we were telling you to pick him up because the nature of this offense, how he can be up and down and those ups can win you weeks. And he won weeks last week on week nine. In that game, you saw 11 targets for a 28.9% target share. That's an elite target share when you're pushing 30%. Ran 40 routes. I bet he's still tired from that. 42.2% of his snaps were in the slot. That means he was using the boundary a good bit of the time. Smaller wide receiver pegged as a slot receiver. We pegged him as a slot receiver plus because he's very nuanced. He's quicker than what was displayed at the combine. Can get behind the defense good ball skills, you can put him on the outside and he can win with nuance, and you can put him in a slot, he can do his thing there. Had 222 air yards in this game, was getting deep targets, was getting volume, all good stuff there, which led to the fantasy production. Using this chart here to look at his PPR fantasy production here, we had three tremendous weeks, two wide receiver one performances, which is very good for a rookie. We had some down games, also the missed games due to the concussion, but the fact that he can tap in to upside on any given moment makes him a wide receiver that you want on your fantasy team right now he's kind of up and down but we can kind of see that there are trend lines here when there's a plus matchup where houston has to throw the ball he's got some upside there he could tap into that have a huge week you throw him in your lineup and that's a lottery ticket you want to explore because you want 30 fantasy points you want 25 shit you even want 20 that's how it works also when he gets a lot of targets in these matchups, you're seeing 7 or more, 7, 10, 11, those high-volume games, that's when he scores the fantasy points. That's when he gets the opportunity to produce in your fantasy lineup is when he's heavily targeted. Jacksonville, Indiana, and Tampa Bay. We told you that Tampa Bay matchup was going to be fire. We told you there was going to be opportunities in that matchup, and that's what happened there. But C.J. Stroud is the magic that's making it happen because he throws lasers all over the field. He'll throw it deep. He'll throw it short. He'll throw it to the intermediate. He'll throw everywhere. And he will cash in in these plus matchups. We saw it this week. We saw him weeks prior. We did have a stretch of slowness there. But the Texans were dealing with some offensive line issues. But C.J. Stroud 
is that dude. A very good rookie quarterback, playing better than expected, exceeding expectations, very accurate downfield, fits well with this offense and also look at the trend lines of where he throws the ball he likes to throw it deep he likes to throw it over the middle tank down when he's lined up in the slot goes in that area a lot he's also used on the outside giving him a lot of opportunities to get sprayed with targets which is happening and him pushing the ball downfield him getting about 11 a dot per pass attempt means that we're getting some good quality targets going to these wide receivers, which could equate to fantasy production. Again, looking at these wide receivers here, you want Nico Collins because he's getting the air yards. You're seeing Robert Woods down there. He was out in week nine due to an injury, allowing Noah Brown to step up. Noah Brown getting some opportunity, and his opportunities have been ramping up recently. And then Tank Dell with just seven games to his name due to him being out due to the concussion. We got four touchdowns, 28 catches, 454 yards. But he's also getting a lot of targets. On any given week, any of these wide receivers can hit. Any of them can. Anybody running routes for the Texans can hit that week. Even Dalton Schultz, because the volume runs rampant in this offense. If it's a plus matchup, look at the over-under. If it's 45 or higher, you're going to want to look at these wide receivers. Nico Collins is pretty steady because he gets the deep targets. Tank Dell is up and down a little bit, but he can be steady. He can go for runs. Robert Woods hasn't hit to his upside yet considering what's going on in this offense, but he's had a couple decent games with wide receiver three production. Noah Brown hit last week, and let's talk about him because he's been on the upswing here. 56% of the snaps in week six, then they hit by 72% against Carolina, 72% against Tampa Bay, and he's been rolling here, getting targets as well, six, five, and five. So that's 16 targets in his last three games. Noah Brown seeing some opportunities here. Robert Woods has been dealing with an injury. But the thing is, when you look at these wide receivers, the wide receiver one, the wide receiver two, wide receiver three, it doesn't matter. C.J. Stroud will target them. And if there's volume in this offense, they're going to get some looks. Are you going to want Noah Brown? Maybe if you're hurting a wide receiver, maybe if you want him for the plus matchups that the Texans are in, because the ball will go everywhere, the volume will be there, and he could have a chance to cash as long as he's seeing snaps and running a lot of routes here. And looking at his production over the course of his career, he was a utility guy with the Cowboys. He was there for spot moments, not super productive, but he stayed with the team. He was able to be on the field, which is something good for a late round pick like him. But honestly, we're coming back here with the Texans. We're starting to get some opportunities here. And he's a player you want to pay attention to. Do you need to pick him up? Not really. Is he a guy you want to look at in deep leagues? Yeah. You kind of want to look at him in 14-teamers, 16-teamers to see if there's some scratch there. Because a lot of these wide receivers we talk about, they're already picked up. He's running some routes, seeing some snaps, and an offense that spreads the ball around and can be pretty powerful in plus matchups. Noah Brown, though, is more of an ancillary piece because I would target Tank Dell ahead of him. I would target Nico Collins ahead of him. So he's a player that is going to have up and down games, and you have to watch his workload going forward still. But you're looking at these wide receivers because you need a wide receiver. Tank Dell is a shoe-in pickup. You're picking him up. Whether you need a wide receiver or not, he's a guy everyone's going after. However, he should already be rostered. Likely he's already on a team, especially since waivers went through. He should not be sitting there. Noah Brown, only in deep leagues, really, or if you want to play around with your lineup because there's a lot of dudes in this offense. Dalton Schultz getting an opportunity. Robert Woods will be back eventually. If Robert Woods is out, you may want to look at Noah Brown, but you also want to look at the matchup the Texans are in. I'm not talking about Week 10. I'm also talking about for the whole season. So a player you want to monitor in 12 to 10 team leagues, 10 team leagues, not likely. 12 team leagues, not really likely, but you may want to monitor it. 14 and 16 team leagues, yeah, you want to look at them. Noah Brown, more than likely you don't need him. Tank Dell, you do need him, but he's probably rostered. But we're also talking about the waiver wires of past here because we've been talking about him quite a bit. And also, you want that confirmation bias from me. Tank Dell should be rostered in all leagues. If you're sitting on waivers, shame on you because you should have already picked him up weeks ago. But Tank Dell's the truth. Noah Brown's on an upswing here. You may want to look at him in deeper leagues, but those two wide receivers are cooking in this offense because 
CJ Stroud is the man. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to hear about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.